welcome. Um, I first met uh, Philip, Philip Brunner, uh, as uh, part of the Champions Programme online. He is a fellow academic who is an IBM champion for his work uh, on, on the mainframe, the, um, who founded the, uh, the first European uh, MOOC um, on, on mainframe technology and has been diligently spreading the word through two, not one, but two universities uh, in, uh, in, in Germany. So um, I'm, uh, I'm very, very, we're very lucky to, uh, to, to have him on board. Uh, for those of you who are in uh, education and know a bit about the different systems around the world and, and myself, I've, I've um, uh, visited the States and uh, talked to people in France and in Belgium. Um, you would appreciate that the German-speaking region, the Dach region, uh, is unique in the strength of its mainframe uh, education uh, profile. And uh, so, uh, so Philip has agreed uh, as somebody who's very much an insider on, on the Dach mainframe education to give us a, a, a tour and, uh, and uh, offer us some explanations as uh, perhaps why it is as strong as it is and perhaps there are some lessons we can learn. So I'm going to get out of his way and, uh, and give Philip the floor and uh, I will watch for your comments and, uh, and engage him at the end. So over to you, Philip. Thanks a lot, Herb. Thanks for the kind introduction. And um, I hope you can see my slides now and myself as well. Oh, Everything's okay? We cannot see your slides just yet. Yes, sorry. Okay, okay, so let's check that. Yes. One second. Probably I have. Ah, um, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Hang on a second. That's just a second. It's so funny. It was great until we jinxed it. Let me. Just going to say one second if I can. It all there. Yeah, that's the one. Vol build modus. Okay. All right, so you can see it now, right? Great. Okay, thanks. All right, so thanks, uh, thanks a lot again, uh, Herb, for the kind introduction and. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. So thanks first uh, to the organizers and to Herb for, for asking me um, to give this talk uh, at the GSE event. And um, I'm, very, I'm very happy to, to speak about these topics. And Herb already mentioned a few things about myself. Maybe I will, um, I will add a little bit and introduce myself first a little bit. Uh, so um, my name is Philipp Brune, as, as, as you know. Um, my main occupation is I'm a professor for business information systems engineering at the University of Applied Sciences in Neu-Ulm, uh, which you can see here, the, the logo. Um, if you wonder where that is, uh, we are um, part of the city of Ulm, which is uh, right in the middle between Stuttgart and Munich in the south of Germany. And unfortunately, we are not so well known. Um, we are a medium-sized city. Um, but a very beautiful city, old medieval uh, city and a cathedral. And um, yeah, so we are, we are located in the south and um, the University of Neu Ulm is, is not so big, but uh, I'm also teaching uh, mainframe stuff at, uh, or mainly teaching the mainframe things at um, different other places. First of all, of course, I'm teaching this since 2015, as Herb mentioned, at the Goethe University in Frankfurt. And the main reason for that is that Frankfurt, of course, is the German financial center 
um, has a lot of uh, mainframe clients and mainframe customers uh, around uh, the whole region, Rhine-Main region. There are many, uh, the, the big banks, some big insurances uh, and other financial service providers. So this is really a mainframe area. And therefore um, the, the need and the, the relevance of these things there is much, much higher than in, in other regions. Um, this is because um, of course mainframes are mainly used by large companies and large companies in Germany um, are typically uh, either the automotive companies, we are, which are more in the south. So we have also here in, in Stuttgart region mainframes, cl mainframe clients, or they are uh, in financial services and also retail. Um, so we are. It's, it, there are some hotspots where, where these skills are really needed and therefore it makes more sense to teach that in, in Frankfurt. And um, I'm also, as, as Herb already mentioned, involved in various initiatives to do some uh, online courses, and I will have a look on that later on as well. So this is a little bit about myself, my own history is before I started uh, to teach at the University in Neu-Ulm and later on in Frankfurt, um, I am, uh, or I have been working as a um, software engineer and project manager, IT consultant and, and uh, team lead. Um, in uh, different companies. And uh, the first one was the uh, Hypo Vereinsbank in these days, the second largest German uh, financial institution. Nowadays, it is, uh, belongs to the Unicredit group. Um, so it has changed, but in these days, this was of course a big mainframe shop as well. And later on, I worked for um, BMW and um, then I went to the, to the university. So, um, I have some background in these fields and practice as well. Sorry to interrupt. We yes. didn't see your screen change, so we can still see the opening. Yeah, that's fine. I'm still talking. I will oh, change. Oh. Sorry, there was no change. So now there will be a change. Sorry. <laughs> okay, let's try. Okay, now you see the screen change. Right. Wonderful. All right. So. Um, I would like to talk about, as I said, about a GSE's perspective, uh, uh, about a DACH perspective on, on mainframe education. And of course, the question always is, um, why should we do that? And if someone asks us as an educator or as a professor, why, why are you working with these things? Why are you interested in these things? Why are you discussing these things? Then you should give an answer. And um, uh, I realized in, in my journey through academia, that the relevance of these things is not obvious to, to everyone. And um, especially those who might have not been involved in such kinds of, of projects in the past are still considering mainframes as outdated, historical or whatever. And um, so the question is, why is this relevant? And what, what makes it especially relevant in these days? And, and I feel that in, in last years, um, this has become more and more popular and also realize that more and more decision makers that these issues are relevant and that, that we have a big, a big problem here. And this is why I show you this, this survey, which has been done by Deloitte last year. And um, they basically asked the decision makers in financial services, uh, what are your biggest challenges? And you can see that the, that the top most, of course, is create digital capability. But on, on uh, place two, we have modernized legacy systems. And the reason for that is that probably not only myself, but many people are convinced that these things for financial services, especially for banks are connected, okay? Because um, creating digital capability, catching up with fintechs and, and startups, uh, startup banks like N26 and TransferWise and how they are called, Revolut um, is for, for many is a challenge. And one of that, of course, is the IT infrastructure. And the IT infrastructure, uh, still is, of course, largely a mainframe based infrastructure. And there have been a lot of projects trying to modernize, many failed. Some banks think about migrating away, but they do not manage it and so on. So modernized legacy systems is, I think, a big driver. And it's also something that we should focus on in, in, in education, because um, I think this is, this is basically the, the, the underlying issue that all mainframe shops have and also of course uh, financial services and insurances have. So this is just to, to motivate these things. And um, 
then of course the question arises uh, what do we want to to teach in 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 this field in this uh, sorry no. Yeah, so that's okay. Um, so what, what, what do we want to do? So I think um, in Germany, as, as Herb said, we have uh, maybe a little bit different academic system than in, in other countries. And we also have a different or slightly different system of education in general regarding kind of the work split between the different um, institutions and different paths to, to qualification and to, to education. And um, we are, for example, in, in universities, we have this, this system of uh, two types of universities, the, the universities of science or the, the sort of real universities and the universities of applied sciences, which uh, are more focusing on cooperation with industry and, and uh, adopting industry, industry needs as well. But of course, in, in the last years with the Bologna process, these, these things merge and, and the, 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 the barriers uh, between these types disappear. And in addition, um, uh, of course, we have a, a, a huge educational sector, which is focusing on professional education, not meaning lifetime training or, or uh, professional training during the work life, but a systematic professional education that is in Germany organized by what we call the chambers, the chambers of commerce and the chambers of, um, of uh, uh, craftsmanship and so on. Um, and these are actually granting the, the degrees. And uh, this is what we call the dual education system. So for many tasks and jobs, we typically will don't have um, uh, academics. We, we have people who have been trained uh, in this dual education system and get their degree from uh, kind of these these um, traditional chambers of uh, of that of their uh, of their trade. Okay, so um, universities, especially the the full universities, um, actually would refuse to provide or do product trainings. So we are not teaching an IBM solution in general. We are teaching concepts, methodologies. We're teaching research issues and things like that. Um, so mainframe is part of, of the academic, of the academic uh, education, not as a technology training. We are doing that as a concept. And um, I think that's important because every professor would refuse to, to uh, be kind of a, a paid trainer for, for IBM in general in Germany. And that is uh, maybe a little bit different because um, we have this constitutional independence of professors, which is based in the constitution of the Federal Republic of Germany. And we have similar concepts, of course, in Switzerland and Austria as well. And this independence, of course, is kind of a professional, professional uh, ethics or something. So we, we probably most professors would refuse to say, okay, let's teach mainframe because IBM wants us to, or the clients wants us, or the university management wants us, we, we don't have to do that then. So if you, if you teach it, we should teach it from a, because we are convinced that it is necessary and that it is an interesting and valuable concept that is relevant uh, to, to also to, to the field of computer science in general. And um, so I, I see mainframe more as an architectural paradigm with a lot of implications than just a product. And um, this is what I'm trying to, to teach as well. So this is important to note as academic mainframe education, different from maybe from other regions in the world, will never replace or uh, um, yeah, be, a, be an alternative to serious professional training in, in, in on the job using seminars and, and things like that. So the graduates of a university program regardless if they are bachelor or master, typically will in, in, in the Dach region will not work as a kind of a system administrator or operator or something like that. They will typically go to fields like software development, custom made software development. The German uh, TE industry is largely focused on custom made software and, and individual consulting services and things like that. And they, it, it is also strongly dominated by small to medium sized companies that are sometimes not even well known outside their special domain. 
And um, so software developers, architects, consultants, or project managers, these are typical roles that um, graduate from a master's program, for example, in computer science or information systems that would typically take, take over after, after graduating. So they are seeing for them mainframe or legacy system skills in general, provide an added value because these are the, the topics that they will be confronted with in professional life afterwards. So the lectures, the focus of academic lectures on this field is mainly provide an introduction, giving overviews, understanding technical and also non-technical implications of mainframes and of this kind of paradigm. Also learning, of course, some maybe some, some vintage languages like COBOL and PL1 or so, uh, at least the basics of that, understanding how ZOS works compared to other operating systems that they that they have or that they learn or, or know, and all these things. But they will not learn in detail, typically, to uh, set up a mainframe system completely, for example, or to administrate or to 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 optimize or things like that. This uh, is more focused on this this is kind of hands-on things on uh, administrating these mainframe systems or products is typically what in Germany is, is more done by, so system programmers tasks or database admin tasks will be typically, not always, but mostly more graduates of the professional education system, which we call Fachinformatiker in Germany, the, the degree. And um, uh, there are similar systems in Switzerland and Austria as well. So they also have a lot of these professional training things and the people educated there will be more in, uh, let's say, in, in, in systems administration in general, not only in the mainframe domain, but for all kinds of platforms. And um, so I think these are some, some issues that, that you need to understand to see uh, what would motivate or what, what leads to actually uh, dealing with these things. So first of all, academics must be convinced that they do something valuable and that it is contributing to their research. Second thing is um, do not expect that academic mainframe education will replace or solve the skill gap issue alone. Because in our, in our domain, we need to, to do that things in professional education as well. So the topic of leg legacy systems, which is kind of more the, the broader topic behind uh, the mainframe uh, stuff, um, is not restricted to the mainframe. We still have other platforms that face similar problems and challenges, like for example, the i-series by IBM, but also in Germany, we have the BS2000, I think as well in, in the UK, they, they run some large scale applications on BS2000, which comes from the Siemens Fujitsu legacy. And um, it's extremely important for the German public service. For example, we run these on the Fujitsu mainframes, like our, our complete tax system and the national insurance and so on. So there are some other platforms that are more or less uh, coming from the same history as the IBM uh, mainframe and face similar, uh, similar issues. And um, so the, the, the typical uh, general thing that I, I see here is, uh, also in the, the discussions that you do with, with your fellow academics or with other people in, in, this, in the domain is that basically you're facing with systems that are uh, monolithic to some respect and highly integrated, highly coupled. So vertically scalable, highly monolithic based on an integrated proprietary hard and software stack, which means that all the, uh, up to the application level or below the application level, as you can see here on the right hand side, um, we have um, more or less products by our vendor, which are highly tied to each other and much better integrated than on, on most other platforms, which leads to a overall better performance, better throughput, but of course also bigger dependence on, on, the, on the vendor and on the, um, on the uh, yeah, make, making things proprietary and, and not easy moved away, which is the, the basic challenge that, that some companies uh, don't like. And that, of course, is something that, that has to be taken into account as well. So 
The benefits of the platform is a, the, the, the nice integration between the layers. And I'm always telling the students that it's not restricted. This, this concept is not restricted to the mainframe. You have the same in the Microsoft stack, for example, and people also using Microsoft products sometimes, especially for this integration. So it is a value by itself. And that is uh, the same here, that you have a big high integration from the hardware to the uh, up, up to the application layer. And um, of course, historically grown, these systems often have lack of documentation and they've written in languages that are not part of the regular uh, mainstream education, at least today. So that, that is a problem and that is a, a challenge that has to be addressed somehow. And of course, IBM is addressing that and others are addressing that in, in different ways. But nevertheless, I think all these approaches have something um, uh, for their, on, on their side, which, which makes them valuable. And, and um, it depends, of course, on the requirements and, and, and the strategy of a, of a client. I think the, the, if you talk about mainframe modernization, the, the real issue is what, what actually do you mean with that? Um, and to understand this, so does it mean you want to rehouse the application and run it basically on the same stack on another hardware, which is probably not really modernization? Or does it mean that you modernize it on the platform using more open and new technologies? which is highly encouraged and, and, and uh, supported by IBM as well in, in, in recent years. Just think about, for example, container extensions and things like that. Or, or what does it actually mean? Do you mean changing the language to a modern language? Or does it mean changing the platform? Or does it mean you want to, to get rid of the, the middleware or, or whatever? So modernization is a very difficult and broad topic. And I think that... Um, this is also one goal of academic education to, to at least understand the whole, the whole uh, uh, field and problem to be able to, to decide what could be a strategy that it makes sense for a, for a client. Okay? And not just telling, okay, we need to rewrite everything in Java as it's done frequently today. So um, in general, of course, it's understand also for the students to, to, to see, and I think this has to be made more clear that, uh, to, to also win and attract more academics to do mainframe education as well as students to make clear that um, the concepts from the cloud that are typically proposed as the solution to everything today and by cloud I mean not uh, I mean of course in cloud in general could also cover mainframe and, 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 and uh, vertically scalable systems but um, when we talk about cloud, typically people mean hyperscalers. So they mean vertically, uh, horizontally scaling systems with a lot of standard service and so on, uh, like Google or, or Amazon is doing. And um, when you talk about that, then typically you should keep in mind that um, the throughput and the, the, uh, the scalability of such cloud solutions is limited. And even though the numbers are impressive, the number of six transactions actually executed every day is much more impressive. And that is to, to get to this 1 million uh, per second uh, from 60,000 is, is a big step. And that is something that will not be uh, easily achieved by the cloud. So I think that um, there is uh, a need for these kind of vertically scalable systems. And that is uh, also an important concept that I think that should covered by academic education. And just to, to remind you, when we talk about mainframes, we focus on this left side paradigm, which unfortunately has a lot of uh, sort of gotten a little bit uh, uh, forgotten in the, in, the, in the research world for, for many years, because all people in research are focusing on cloud and grid, mostly in the, in, in the last two decades. And um, still, the impression is, and this is of course what governs the education as well, is that, that this is the future in solving everything. And I try to, to outline why this is not the case. So we, why we should talk about vertically scalable, highly reliable scale up platforms like the mainframe, but of course, like others, we like power systems and things like that as well uh, in the education uh, as well. So you can see the, the advantages and benefits and, and drawbacks of both sides. So why should we care as an academic and why I wanted to, of course, to convince more colleagues from other places to, to uh, sort of uh, 
think about mainframe education and, and, and introducing these things back to the curriculum. And um, I think that there is still, even in Germany, where we do a lot of things already, um, there is um, still a mismatch between the, the relevance and importance of mainframe-based solutions and information processing in industry and its public perception, uh, also among industry decision makers, but also in the academic world. And um, this, this led to the fact that uh, academic research and teaching in, in the field nearly disappeared um, du during the last decades. And this, of course, leads to one part of the skill gap that we have nowadays for COBOL developers and for architects in the mainframe field and so on. So on the other side, this, is, this of course means that, that the academic education more or less ignores a large part of today's mission critical information processing, which is not a good thing by itself. So because we need to introduce students to everything that is relevant. On the other side, we have, of course, which I tried to outline is that legacy modernization is crucial and that we have the growing skill gap. I think you all know that, uh, and it's probably the same everywhere. And I think that during the pandemic in this, this uh, New Jersey issue that, that came up in earlier this year, with the uh, unemployment uh, insurance system in the US in, in New Jersey, um, that even made it to the, to the everyday news and made the governor make a statement even though this statement might not be accurate and, and, and correct, but nevertheless, it got a lot of focus to the problem. And I think that it, 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 it is an example that made realize or may, may make many people realize that, that there is an issue and that we should attract it and uh, attack that in, in, in education. And beside this, of course, there are still so many interesting research opportunities because this is still a niche for, for research and, and in a niche, you can always find some new gems to, to study. So, I wanted to, to come to the what we actually do, because I promised you to explain what we're actually doing in, in, uh, in the Dach region. Of course, mostly Germany, but also uh, due to the language, these things are uh, also useful for Switzerland and Austria, and we're also trying to, to cooperate with institutions there. And um, this is just a short outline what we offer nowadays uh, regularly on in German uh, universities, let's say on premise and as an online course. So um, by talking of we, I mean uh, the academic mainframe consortium and also other colleagues who are kind of friendly associated with our efforts, and I will come back to that on the next slide to introduce a little bit to the kind of organizational structure that we have to, uh, um, to, to support and uh, establish mainframe education in the academic uh, life. So running local courses that are existing for usually for many years already, all of them have a history that is five to 10 years at mi minimum, are um, of course the courses that I am teaching in Frankfurt and these are two master level modules with five ECTS credits each. And um, we're doing that on uh, as part of the master's programs in computer science, but also business information systems. And also it could be used as an elective for students from other um, domains as well. So it's kind of a part of the master's education in, in computer science and related uh, programs. And, um, this is a two, two semester course with two introducing, starting with a mainframe computing class, which is kind of a uh, laying out the basics, talking about the hardware, uh, the architecture, operating systems, uh, programming languages, and so on. And enterprise mainframe computing, which broadens the view, uh, getting to enterprise related uh, technologies in general. Um, of course, focusing on the mainframe, but many things that we do there are, of course, concepts like message queuing, transaction processing, Java EE and things like that, that are not restricted to the mainframe, but also valid and important in other, on other platforms. And um, there's similar program or similar modules in uh, University of Leipzig, which have a long history dating back to 
the late uh, Professor Sput, who was the kind of formerly IBM employee who set up a lot of these mainframe things in, in, um, in Germany already many years ago. So he's, he, he passed away, I think five years ago. So, so he, his main activities are in maybe a decade ago in this field, but still uh, his legacy is kind of the basis of many of the things that we do. And also he, he was professor in Leipzig and before that in Tübingen, so University of Tübingen as well, has still these courses and also extending that. And uh, here Gerald Kreisig is kind of the, um, the, the lecturer. He's a former IBM, uh, retired IBM engineer who is, who is doing that um, in Tübingen. So we have um, regular long running courses in three major places, also a little bit split, distributed uh, over the map in Germany. Um, but of course, this is not this is not uh, everything because today uh, also um, we should explore the possibilities of distant and online learning. Um, and we all learned in the pandemic that that this is uh, also very important to have a education system that is reliable and resilient against uh, crises. So um, I think that especially in such a, a topic that is a little bit special and where lecturers and, and educators are not uh, available everywhere. Um, online courses could provide an interesting uh, alternative. And um, as you know, as Herb already mentioned in the, in the introduction is that um, I myself was involved in the first German mainframe MOOC, a massively open online course that we provided on the platform offered by the Hasso Plattner Institute. Hasso Plattner Institute is a institute of the University of Potsdam, uh, which is founded and funded by um, Professor Hasso Plattner, one of the founders of the SAP, uh, who invests a lot of his uh, wealth in this, this uh, institute and um, it's associated with the University of Potsdam. And they offer a lot of different things and also have a nice platform for providing free online mainframe, um, massively open online courses, which is called OpenHPI. And so it's open and free for everyone. Even the materials are accessible by everyone. And um, we did this introductory course on mainframes there, which I might show now a little bit, so. So this is the, the page, uh, you can get it on OpenHPIE. And they have a lot of other courses, of course, most of them related to information systems or, or computer science. And um, they already, so in general, it's a nice platform. Everything's free, except if you want to do the, the credits, then you have to pay a small fee for the exam, but otherwise it's, it's free. And there is the, uh, and you can also use the materials. Um, the videos are open. You can embed them in your own course and, and use them as you as you like. Um, so that that is a nice thing. We did it in 2017. We did it in German, and in 2018, we did it in English. So it's also available in English, both on the same platform, and both courses are still open and available there. Uh, so everyone is invited still to log in and use them as you want. So this is kind of a public initiative. MOOCs address a larger audience. They are not restricted to university education, but they also try to, uh, to address uh, people from, from the field who want to do kind of lifelong learning or just know something or whatever. Um, so this is one thing. The other thing, of course, are This was the wrong one. I wanted to do the slides. Yes, I hope you can see it again. So this was just a short look on the on the mainframe MOOC to, to show you how to find it. Beside this, uh, because I, I said MOOCs are more addressing the broader public for uh, really doing university courses. There's also an offering um, which we designed um, at the so-called Virtuelle Hochschule Bayern, 
which is a, a platform provider by the Bavarian universities, a governmental uh, uh, platform. And it is open and free for all students enrolled in a Bavarian educational institution. They are, it's not open for the broader public, but it's on the other side, it's offering uh, much more um, university style courses with including exercises, including practical parts and including also, of course, a regular exam, which allows to um, to do this course every semester and get really get the credits and take it home to your home institution and do it there and take it into account for your studies. OK, so this is the, the, the upside. The downside is that it is restricted currently to Bavaria participants from other states in Germany and other regions could take part, but they have to enroll and pay a fee. OK, so that is the idea. And I work with Professor uh, Wilke from, from uh, Friedrich Alexander University in, in, in Erlangen, in Nürnberg, Nürnberg um, together to create these mainframe programming one and two. They are in German. Uh, but the advantage is, as I said, that, that this really allows to have mainframe courses on every university in Bavaria, and that are uh, still a lot. So that is it's a good chance to get this topic in the, you know, to a broader audience. And um, the, the split here, programming one and two, is very similar to the one that I'm doing in the, in the Goethe University. Uh, so mainframe programming one is a, a lot about COBOL and also about um, the platform, the architecture, the operating system and things like that. Uh, mainframe programming two is more about enterprise uh, technologies and broader view like current trends, Docker and blockchain and things like that. Okay, so this is this is uh, kind of the landscape in Germany. In, in Switzerland, for example, that we all, there's also an offering at the um, Hochschule Luzern. Uh, which also uh, has their own mainframe system. And um, there's an offering in Austria as well by some um, more from the professional side, uh, like dual education um, that doing mainframe courses regularly as well. So I think in this region, we are set up with, uh, with uh, a decent number of, of good uh, educational opportunities. And also the, the, the students like these courses, I think. So the, the, the reception and the number of participants is, uh, is growing. And it's also um, kind of a constant amount of people taking these courses. And I said already, we, so what, what do I mean by we? So in, in, in Germany, uh, and also including people from the neighboring countries like Switzerland and Austria, um, uh, in 2015, we founded what we call the Academic Mainframe Consortium, which is a, a non-profit organization. Um, it's a German uh, called Eingetragener Verein, which is a, a society that is non-profit. And um, so the, the goal, um, the mission of this institution is to support the academic mainframe related education with some some support as well for let's say professional education and um, <clears throat> it is open and, and the idea is that we, we try to to create a community for a joint effort that brings together the researchers the academics the students and also the companies that are requiring mainframe skills or looking for mainframe um, employees in uh, in a forum and pro provide a forum that allows to to uh, learn from each other and also to um, to get the students um, kind of attracted to the companies that are searching for mainframe skills. And um, what we do is that we organize regular meetings uh, with all members, industry members as well as, as academic members, uh, usually two or three times a year. <coughs> where we traditionally in the past did one meeting in IBM lab uh, always in, in January. Okay, this year it was a little bit uh, difficult, but uh, or next year it will be difficult, but um, we, we hope to resume this tradition as soon as it is possible. Um, and beside this, our meetings are usually hosted by one of the company or university members. So we meet at a place and um, do our meetings there, having talks, discussing things, 
um, sometimes having tech updates from IBM itself or other companies uh, solutions or also from research and um, kind of also discussing strategy in cooperation between companies and universities. And the second part, of course, is by the membership fees that are, have to be paid, especially by the companies. Um, we support financially the operations of mainframe systems at the educational institutions. And this, of course, involves not only the, the systems themselves, but also teaching uh, um, salaries and, and, and uh, technical stuff and, and things like that. So Academic Mainframe Consortium currently is a more or less German speaking institution, but we are still open, of course, to members from abroad as well. Sometimes IBM people are there, sometimes um, I think Herb was there. We also organize uh, that was, and maybe that's something to conclude. I have some pictures here about initiatives and things, nice things that happened during the last years and that academic men, the AMC was actually supporting and, and, and doing. So here on the left-hand side, we is a, is a photo of a group of students and other young people. Uh, we organized a summer school last summer in Stuttgart or in, in, in Böblingen in the IBM laboratory, uh, which was really a, a great success. And this is kind of the, the group's uh, photo here. There were talks by companies, by IBM themselves, also we had some social events and things like that, like a summer school is. And this was funded for the students by the AMC and organized as well. Um, here you see a screenshot of the MOOC I just showed you, which is uh, uh, also, I think, kind of a flagship project that we did during the last years. Um, myself and, and Wolfgang Greis of the European Mainframe Academy, as well as Professor Polze from uh, Hasso Plattner Institute. And um, here you see what we also do is supporting hardware and hardware and software, of course. Um, so you can see this is a, a donation that has been made to the AMC, um, the storage system, the S8800, uh, which was donated by the, uh, the DATEV, uh, which is a big mainframe client in Germany, to the AMC. It is an, uh, actually two systems, and one is in, in Frankfurt now and one is in, in Leipzig. And also we have um, the, uh, just recently have been donated two actual mainframe machines. This is a C12 uh, generation system, CBC12, uh, that we just got in, in, in Frankfurt. So we now have in, in, in Tübingen, in Frankfurt and in Leipzig, actual uh, IBM systems up and running, which have, um, so we can do education not only on our own hardware, but we also are able to do more independent research activities related also to the system themselves in, in, uh, uh, in the future. And that is, of course, a big step forward uh, compared to just having cloud offerings. That is something that uh, I also always like to emphasize that, that for to getting mainframe education sustainable and, and long time in the academic curricula, you have to have research in the field as well, um, because professors usually teach what they like and they like what they research. And if, if there's no academic research in the domain of vertically scalable systems, then there will be no education in the long run. And so I think it's important to have the machines as well there to do some hardware related uh, things or system related things as well. Okay, so this is, um, and of course, these systems are for education and nice, it's nice to have to show the students the systems and giving them the chance maybe to really do something hands on, on the hardware management console or whatever in the future. So this is a group photo here, are some members of the AMC, some supporters, some people from the team in Frankfurt who are doing the system. And um, you also, on this picture, you have all the three German Z champion, champions, uh, IBM champions for Z on, on one picture. Um, which is, um, I think at the moment we only have three of us and that's, but that's good. All right, so this is something to conclude with. I wanted to conclude with this nice uh, overview of our recent activities and showing that there's a lively and working ecosystem between universities, academia and so on. And this is a picture of our university in Neu-Ulm, which I like to, to show you as well to, uh, as a final slide to, to conclude uh, this talk. And now, of course, I'm happy to uh, discuss and uh, answer questions. Uh, 
Hello, Philip. Can yes. you hear me? I can hear you. Ah, fantastic. Right. Can you see me as well? I'm not yes. sure. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, ho I hope I'm still in time. So yes, let's yes. see. No, yes. no, no. We, 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 have, we have plenty of time yeah. for the question. But, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, the first one, we have a, uh, a comment from uh, uh, Michael Carey, a professor from, from Ireland. I, I, yes. I can't mm -hmm. remember if, we, if we've all met um, at, the, at the same time, but I know you and, and I know mm -hmm. him. Uh, so his is a, a note on the differences in the si between the systems mm. um, where some of the phenomena that we see often is that often university courses seem as if they are in competition with some of the professional courses and maybe this causes mm. uh, some of the difficulties that we see. Uh, moreover, he, he wanted to know if you had any feedback on, uh, on the MOOCs Mm -hmm. And how did you decide on the curriculum that would go into them? All right. So for the MOOCs, um, actually, um, there was a lot of feedback um, the, by, by the participants, which are which was mostly positive. And um, uh, still, some people are enrolling in these courses. And and uh, what is was interesting, the first MOOC, I think, it had about three and a half thousand participants. Uh, with a large number of them not from directly being students, but many professionals as well. Sometimes people who wanted to know about the mainframe, sometimes mainframers who wanted to just see what we do, if there's something new to learn for them. So it was a very uh, heterogeneous and broad spectrum of people there. And uh, we also had some lively discussions in the chat during the first episode, the first time it ran. And um, so the feedback and also the systematic feedback that was yeah that was was rather positive some people said okay it was too 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 deep technically too deep at some places or some points in the, in the curriculum okay this depends on your individual uh, background of course but um besides this it was very very positive and also from from uh, this is what why we did it again and also the Hasso Plattner institute was very impressed by the numbers of of enrollments that which was higher than on average on their courses. And also the number of people who actually did the final exam uh, was, was much higher than, uh, the, the percentage was much higher than in the other courses. So they were really convinced that this is, it was a good offering and this is why we did it again in, in English language then to attract it or make it attractive for, for a broader uh, audience in, in Europe and so on. And um, yeah, so the two courses are not completely identical because we added some new stuff. And this brings me to the question, what, what was, uh, how did we decide on the curriculum? So um, I think it's, it's important to understand that in Germany, actually only a professor decides what he wants to teach. And of course, even though this was a, a kind of a joint effort, of course, we had to, to discuss first what we think. And I think it was very good to, to have Wolfram on board because he of course has a lot of professional knowledge. And basically we discussed this together and then decided who will do what and uh, uh, what we consider important. And then we created the, the curriculum uh, as a joint effort from, from different sides, from Wolfram's side, who is more from the professional and, and also more from the system operational side, myself, coming more from the software development and architectural side, and also Professor Polze, who is more from hardware architecture in general. So I think it was a good mix and we, we tried to, to span a large scope of, of different perspectives and, and issues around the mainframe, I would say. And um, regarding the normal lectures, of course, it's, it's actually uh, something that, that the individual professor decides upon his or her personal beliefs, what, what is relevant, that is independence of teaching. And of course, um, we're trying to, to match that. I mean, I'm trying to match that. In, in the Academic Man from Consortium, we also discuss about these things uh, in our meetings. So I think this is a good platform to, to exchange what could be relevant or what, what is needed. And um, of course, I try to in, in, in include also members, um, in, in, industry members of the AMC, uh, sometimes uh, giving a guest lecture in, in the courses. So we have industry perspectives in there as well. I hope this answers the question. 
Yes, I, I, I think so. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I mean, ju just, a, just a note on there. I guess in, in theory, our principles are the same about you know, <laughs> professors <to laughs> defining the curriculum and, um, uh, you know, as being very independent. It, it's often how you strike the balance in practice mm -hmm. that is, uh, is a bit, um, it is a bit complicated. Uh, we had a, a note um uh it, it's great that you you actually have your own um mainframe mm. maybe you want to say something about how you got access to those because this seems like a a brilliant example of industry and academia working together absolutely so this is of course as, as you said it's um it would not have been possible without uh, the companies so um I always emphasize also in the MC meetings, the, the need and the advantages of having a, a real hardware system on, on premise that the students can touch and see and, and work with. And um, this got, so Wolfram Greis is very active in the mainframe community in Germany and he knows basically everyone, I think. So um, what, what we managed as AMC was that um, the two storage systems that we have were donated to us by um, by the DATEV, as they, these are systems that are not the newest ones. It's, these are systems that, that got out of their data center. They were just uh, kind of uh, switched off there. So it, it's, it's old, it's not the newest hardware, but of course it has some, uh, also some monetary value. Um, so they donated these systems to the AMC and the AMC then uh, can, puts them to the universities because it's always hard if you donate something to a university, that's not so easy regarding taxes and things like that. So um, uh, the systems belong basically to the AMC as a society and we, we kind of move them, bring them to the universities. And um, so these are the storage systems. Then we got two um, Z11 machines donated by Fiducia GAD some years ago which are uh, placed at Tübingen University and Leipzig University. And just recently this year, we got these two machines now, CBC-12, so newer ones, um, uh, which one got to move to Leipzig and one came to, um, to Frankfurt, which are donated by T-Systems International. Uh, all of these machines have gone out of service there just before. So it's not, it's, it's, it's systems that have been used just a few months ago in, still in production and now moved to the university. So I think these are, it's not the newest hardware, but it's, I think, uh, recent enough to do all the, the modern things on them. And um, regarding the, the software, of course, uh, for academic institutions, um, the, um, the IBM software in general is available through the academic initiative. Um, we managed to get uh, a ZOS, which is not restricted to ZPDT, uh, thankfully, due to the support by IBM. And uh, so they, they, they give that to us. And I think that um, still the, uh, the support by IBM is valuable and necessary to, to, to have that. And we are very good, very well supported by many people from the IBM lab in, in Böblingen, um, where a lot of good mainframers are and they are really um, helpful and also willing to sometimes do it even in their, in their free time to, to help us set up things and, and so on. So, um, because you need to have support to, to not only to have the machines, but to keep them running and, and also install, install the software and, and, and so on. Otherwise, it's, it's uh, um, I mean, it would take a lot of time from, for myself, for example, to do all this alone. So this is not possible, basically. And so we are thankful. And yes, there are many, many helping hands, members of the AMC, mainframers that are engaged in the AMC or sometimes IBM people that are engaged and that, that help us even in their spare time, which is very, very uh, nice and, and also valuable. Uh, otherwise, it would not be possible. You need to have a kind of a joint effort between uh, the vendor in that sense, IBM, and there are at least some people from them, uh, the lab, um, the companies donating the systems and, and uh, the experts in the field collaborating to, to keep it up and running. Yeah, I've, I've often heard it compared to um, owning an elephant. Yes. <laughs> 
Sounds like a good idea, but practicalities mean, well, maybe yeah. it's better that you visit one at the zoo. And, and of course, the idea is that we, I mean, we do not have, um, we do not plan to have a system in every place. It, it's more like to have some hot spots in Germany um, where, where you might have some kind of uh, like a lighthouse, where you, lighthouse projects, where you really have some uh, educational activities around that. And then you could, for example, provide LPARs for, for some other universities as well that are not so um, you know, requiring the, the on premise hardware. That's the idea. So in, in the last couple of minutes, maybe you wanted to say something about your, um, your startup project. Yes, I could. So um, actually, as, as Herb mentions, I'm not only um, involved in, in mainframe due, due to academic um, uh, teaching, but I'm also uh, trying to, to uh, uh, address these issues of application modernization um, from different sites in uh, on the practical side and uh, as an outcome of my, my research activities I, I'm still in the process of, of uh, or founded a company um, which is at the moment still uh, or during the last two years was mainly me, myself but now um, I found some some collaborators and we will Kind of expand this uh, probably next year, beginning of next year. Um, but uh, the idea is this: this project is called Quix, Q W I C S. Maybe you've heard about that. And um, the goal is to is twofold. So one thing is to really address the mainframe modernization uh, thing from the kind of more from the side of of using blockchain technology in in companies as a kind of mediation layer to integrate different systems, which is a little bit different approach from the usual token economy crypto stuff that blockchain is typically associated with. And um, the other side is a framework for bringing uh, um, COBOL applications to an open source world, which includes the Linux one or the Linux on Z as well. So this is uh, definitely a target. Uh, but of course, it's then more or less uh, independent. So to break up this proprietary stack in a way, uh, as I as I explained in the beginning, um, it's not normal rehosting because it has to. It also forces to really touch the code, but it is um, allowing to uh, to get the mainframe applications up and running on other hardware if you want, or on the mainframe itself in a different setup which makes it more independent. And even if you uh, want the mainframe benefits like scalability and so on, you could still uh, profit from the open source approach. And so this is uh, kind of the, the strategy that I'm following, talking to different companies, doing proof of concept at the moment with insurances and so on. So um, it is slowly getting off the ground and, and moving to, to real applications. And of course, if someone is interested in that, please visit the web page, get in touch. I'm always happy to, uh, to talk about it and also to um, do, of course, uh, support you regarding um, uh, exploration of these software solutions. Okay, so I hope that is, um, yeah. Yeah, so sounds like it could be a, a good topic for another GSE talk another time. Yes, uh, I, actually, I, I talked about it once uh, at the GSE modernization uh, uh, meeting in Prague uh, last year. But I think this could be done again, because now, of course, many things have happened, and uh, it's also uh, much more uh, elaborated in the meantime. Fantastic. Well, so we're, we're at about time now. So, so thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it, it's, it's been fantastic uh, to, to hear you and, uh, and, uh, and thanks, hear thanks. The back perspective. Yeah. And uh, we look forward to uh, inviting you another time to take part in some of our activities. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Herb. It was great to be here. Thanks a lot for the, for the comments and to everyone for listening. And I hope you enjoyed it. And please get in touch if you have any ideas for collaboration or whatever you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, to everyone, uh, please, please, please uh, do get us the feedback for this session. I'm going to be writing up my, um, uh, my, my host notes. Um, and uh, and we're, we're going to uh, thank, thank Philip, if you can um, 
if you if you can um, uh, open your cameras and just give him a wave, so he so he knows that you appreciate him. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay. And uh, and then we'll give way to the next session. Thank yes. you so much indeed.